A warm good morning to all my students of class 7 and I am happy to welcome you all to my biology class and for today's zoology class. So in last class we have started chapter 3. No? What is chapter 3? Chapter 3 is not invertebrates. What is the name of the lesson chapter 3? The name of the lesson is kingdom classification 2 that is the classification of animals and about the classification of animals in last class we had started about the topic invertebrates and this class also we will be continuing this topic that is invertebrates in the kingdom classification of animals. So let us get started. So why this chart once again? So in every class I display this chart. Why? Because this is the main classification table. Unless and until you know this table, you will not know what I am teaching about. Right? So I also gave you a... So what is this chart? This is the main chart. How animals or invertebrates are classified. What are invertebrates? Yes, invertebrates are animals without backbone. So we have backbone, so we are called uh, vertebrates. So whichever animals do not have backbone, they are called as invertebrates. And you know, I have also uh, taught you a, a shortcut. No, what did I teach you? Ponytail in this planet is an art of modern era. So in our previous class, we had studied the explanation about uh, Porifera, Platyhelminthes, uh, Nidaria and nematodes we have completed. So until this we have completed in our previous class. In this class we are going to learn about these four and art of modern era. And for and for Annelida, art for Arthropoda, modern for Mollusca and E for Echinodermata. So about Annelida, Orthropoda, Mollusca and Echinodermata we are going to learn in detail in this class. What are their properties? What are their characteristics? What special they have and how do they, uh, speciality they have and how they differ from the other groups of animals all we will be learning in today's class. So first we will start with Annelida. So, as I tell you always uh, in the case of botany or zoology, generally biology itself, what you have to remember, no? Um, so, this is the example for analysis. What is this? Can you guess what this is? What is this? Have you seen this? This is earthworm. What is this? In Tamil, you call it as manpuru. Have you seen? In the soil, you can see this earthworm. Okay. So, in uh, botany or zoology or in any uh, maybe in other subjects also. So whenever you need to describe something, just imagine the picture of that or the image of that uh, organism or something and then you should know to, you should learn to describe them. Okay, It is not memorizing from the textbook, that is a wrong way of studying. So what you do, you just imagine the picture in your mind and you can explain. Okay, While learning itself, you should develop that habit. So this, uh, what can you explain when you see this picture, what all you know? Yes. Okay, about the body, this is the body of the earthworm. No? So, what all can you describe? It is segmented. What is the segmentation? I will choose some other color. So, have you heard this word segmentation? Segmented. See, if there is a big line, okay. So, if I make cross lines between them. See, I am partitioning or segmenting them into small, small portions, right? So, if there is a big line, if I draw lines in between, it means I am making segments or small, small partitions of that big line. Similarly, you have in the earthworm, you have segments like this. You have lines, no? That's why it is called as segmented. The way uh, the tube, the long tube like structures arranged is in the part of segments, many small segments is making the big tube. So you call it as segmented. Then it is ring like. 
you know it is segmented how can you call it as ring like so this is not straight lines actually this is a cylinder it is cylindrical in shape why do you call it as cylindrical see if i cut this suppose if i am making a cut here and cut here how this earthworm will appear it will appear like this no in maths all you must have studied the structure of cylinder like this only so similarly when i cut here and when i cut here it will give this cylindrical structure that's why it is called cylindrical cylindrical it is long is it long yes it is very long so you call it as it is long then it has a ring like structure called as annuli where is the ring i told you it has many segments no but it is not straight straight lines i have as i have drawn so the mm, rings are like this the segments are like this upon the cylinder they are in the form of rings that's why it is called ring like and these rings are called by the term annuli clear what did i tell you so it is segmented since the big tube is part has many small small uh, portions it is called segmented because of the lines and then the lines are not straight lines they are in the form of rings covering the entire cylindrical structure and those rings are called as annuli okay it is also very long and it is also cylindrical in shape so when you see the earthworm these are the properties first you tell what else uh, you can tell about earthworm where do you, where does earthworm live where have you seen you must have seen in your garden soil right so you know earthworm lives in soil right where does what is the habitat what is habitat first of all habitat means the place where a organism live i have told you which is your habitat your habitat is your house right because that is where you live similarly earthworm's habitat is where does it live it lives in soil or sometimes you can also wherever there is more water no you can see so it also lives in water so in soil and water is the habitat then what else you need to know okay they have two portions called as mouth and anus at the upper end you have oh my god at the upper end you have mouth and at the lower end you have anus so mouth through mouth it eats and through the anus it will release the waste materials so earthworm has a mouth at the top at the tip the exact word to be used is the tip and the anus at the lower end then it has something called as chitae what is this chitae it is not seen in the picture but the under side of the the under side means the bottom portion the it is cylindrical no this is upper side and below side you will have small bristle what is bristle bristle means some fine hair like structures so here you will have on the below side you will have fine hair like structures like this okay why these hair like structures because these hair like structures help them to move locomotion means movement to walk about so these bristle like structures called as chitae only help them to move about or it is helpful in locomotion so uh, one example i have told you example for annelida group is earthworm one more example uh, is leeches do you know leeches you call it as uh, attapuchi in tamil okay so leeches is um, attai so these two are examples of so if you see all these uh, uh, um, anim, uh, insects no whatever example you study all will have the same property if you see leeches also their body is also segmented they are also cylindrical like that the same properties only you will have just a typical example what you know more than leeches earthworm all of you must have seen no that's why i have given the image of earthworm so this is all about the uh, group called as annelida what all you have studied about they are they are segmented they have ring like annuli they are long and cylindrical and where do they live either in the soil or in the water and they have a mouth at the tip and anus at the end and also they have bristle like structures called as keta they are called as keta used for locomotion or movement and the typical examples for annelida group is earthworm and leeches so this is all about the group called as annelida so next we we'll learn about arthropoda poda what is poda 
poda means legs poda means legs okay so the example the typical example for arthropoda i am going to give cockroaches example why it is upside down why i have put like this uh, image why did i not show you the straight position i'll tell you later when i, de I describe the structure now this is clear actually to explain you the structure that's why this structure okay so what is this arthropoda 80 percentage which means 80 percentage of animals in the animal kingdom animals means i told you it also in includes insects all right so 80 percentage of the group is arthropoda among the animal kingdom suppose if we have 100 animals out of that 80 are arthropoda only so that great number of um, uh, uh, insects or uh, arthropods you have among the animal kingdom can you understand if you have 100 percentage of animals 80 percentage animals are all arthropods and the example you are going to study here is about cockroach the typical example so what so now you will see the cockroach and uh, explain what are its properties okay where do cockroaches live they are terrestrial terrestrial means on land what is terrestrial terrestrial means land okay so they are on the um, in houses houses all include land only okay so except water the other environment uh, the land area you call it as terrestrial so they are terrestrial and aquatic aquatic means water region right so they can live on water as well as they can live on land then what are the properties they have what can you understand if you see the cockroach they have a exoskeleton they have a body covering called as exoskeleton exo means outside exo means outside see the outer surface of their body has a covering this one the outer surface has a covering it is called as exoskeleton uh, and it is made up of chitin what is chitin? Chitin is made up of protein. What did I tell you? Cockroaches have outer covering, the hard portion of the uh, of their body, no? It is the outer covering and that covering is made up of, it is called as chitin. The covering of the cockroach is called as chitin and it is highly proteinaceous which means it is rich in proteins. Have you seen, how many of you have seen uh, Discovery Channel uh, uh, Bear Grills? Bear Grills Adventures. Have you seen what he used to do? He used to be uh, traveling here and there, no? Without food and water, he will uh, get ready and go, right? And uh, whatever is available, he used to eat. Have you seen what he does every time? He, um, when he gets insects, he is so happy. What he does? He eats the um, insects all, no? That time you will get some crunchy, crunchy sound. Have you heard that? So that is all these proteinaceous material called as chitin. What did I tell? Some arthropods will, uh, or not some, all the animals belonging to the group arthropods will have a body covering that is a very thick material and that material is called, is made up of chitin and that chitin is highly proteinaceous in nature. Uh, have you seen him telling, uh, he used to tell this frequently, uh, today's uh, uh, protein is sufficient for me whenever he eats insects he used to tell so see today i have eaten so much of protein why because insects outer covering called as chitin is highly proteinaceous in nature but it will be so uh, unpleasant to eat no like crunchy uh, sound all you will get or the texture itself will be so crunchy and disgusting right but it is highly proteinaceous in nature see the body of cockroaches are divided into three parts what are they head thorax and abdomen so the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen where is the head for cockroach so this is the head portion okay so which is the thorax portion the middle portion of the uh, cockroach's body is called or any arthropods uh, body is called thorax so head head and this is thorax and this is the abdomen okay so any arthropod is divided into head thorax and 
abdomen and what else can you see in these cockroaches can you see a pair of antenna what is antenna antennae you call in plural it is called antennae and singular it is called antenna so which is the antenna so antennae this is the antennae can you see two hair like structures above the eyes that is called the antennae and also they have compound eyes what is compound eyes they have a pair of eyes where is the eyes so here you have eyes why it is called compound eyes these eyes are able to see cockroaches can see the world okay why how they see because of uh, many photoreceptor cells they have about this you will be learning in your higher grades okay so anyway just know that cockroaches can see with the help of their compound eyes then what else they have three pairs of legs where are where are the three pairs of legs one two and three three pairs of jointed legs why it is called jointed legs actually the word itself ortho means jointed ortho means jointed and poda means leg okay jointed legs is the term for arthropoda that's why it's called arthropods and see you have the both uh, legs see this leg and this leg is joined together see that's why i uh, put this picture to show it upside down Uh, so that you can see the legs okay so the legs this leg and this leg that is the pair of legs are joined together so you have three pairs of joint jointed legs so second pair and first pair so three pairs of jointed legs what else you have the examples you should know now what are the examples for arthropods honey bees and scorpion are the examples so this example i have given you cockroach right even honey bees and scorpion no they are also belonging to the group called as arthropods okay so what have you learnt about arthropods arthropods have jointed legs arthro means jointed poda means legs and then the habitat where all cockroaches live they can either live on land or also they can live on water and their body is covered by a exoskeleton called as chitin which is highly proteinaceous in nature and their body is divided into three parts called as head thorax and abdomen and finally they have antenna okay and then they have compound eyes so that they can see and also they have three pairs of jointed legs the examples for arthropods include cockroaches so apart from cockroaches you can also um see in honey bee and scorpion the same properties okay that is all about arthropods so what have we studied we have studied about two groups and how many groups are yet to study in the group of invertebrates we have two more groups to study what are they mollusks and echinodermata are yet to study that is also very very easy just you can see the picture and you can tell the properties never try to memorize the characteristics just see the picture and mostly whatever you see in your day to day life only i am giving you as example the typical example picture i am giving so actually in your book it is given as honey bee and scorpion only just a cockroach picture i have given so that you can um, interpret you are familiar with the structure of cockroach so next we learn about mollusks the group called as mollusk what is this have you seen this what is this snail right so the example the typical example for mollusks is snails okay so what are the properties of snails what can you see from this picture what all you can see the habitat first of all the habitat for snail where all can you find snails you can find as uh, similar to the previous uh, group snails are also found on land as well as they are found in water wherever there is water you can find snails but sometimes have you seen coming out of water and walking on the ground on the a terrestrial area so they are found on land as well as they are found on water what about their body structure what all do they have they have before that how is the uh, nature of the body you can see the body very soft right see actually the shell is 
very hard but how is the body it is so soft in nature no so that's why it is given the body is soft and unsegmented why it is called unsegmented what is segment segment is i told you if there are lines like this then you call segmented right if if they have lines like this then you can call it as segmented but can you see any lines no right so they are not segmented they are unsegmented organisms and then what is the next, next uh, property their body is divided into three parts what are they head where is the head so this is the head okay then visceral mass the body actually it is like a, a whisky substance it is not proper solid structure it is like a mass of skin so that is called as visceral mass the body is a visceral mass and you have a muscular foot actually the foot is this area which is inside the shell it is hidden actually so this tail like portion no that is called as muscular foot with that foot only it will walk or move about so since it moves about with the help of uh, that muscular foot it is uh, uh, given as in bracket locomotion what is locomotion locomotion means movement from one place to another how it moves how it moves it moves with a muscular foot how is the body the body is a visceral mass and it also has a head so what do you know about the body of the uh, snail they have a head a visceral mass and a muscular foot and this muscular foot helps the snail to move forward okay so this is about the body what else do you know Ah, they also have a hard shell so this shell is the body is very soft but the shell is very hard only the shelled um, uh, group of insects come under mollusca mollusca if you hear, hear the uh, word itself what should come into your mind you should get this word shell so whichever say for example oysters oysters have shell no so they uh, sorry shell no uh, so they are also Uh, considered under the group called as mollusks so whichever organisms have shell on their back they are all belonging to this kingdom called as kingdom mollusca okay so what are the examples i told you apart from snails oysters and mussels are also examples for mollusca group of invertebrates okay so what all do you know about this group very easy right what you can see the picture and tell where can you see this this is actually on the leaf or something so uh, snails usually they are present or mollusks generally they are present on land or in water and then uh, about their body it is very soft and there are no segments so it is called unsegmented and the body is divided into three parts what are they held visceral mass and muscular foot and with the help of muscular foot these uh, mollusks can move about so also they have a the, which is the typical characteristic that is the hard shell they have on their back and other examples apart from snails are oysters and mussels so this is all about the group called as mollusks so next we learn about uh, the last group called as echinodermata this is also a interesting a uh, group which you are very familiar with so let's see what to learn in echinodermata so what is that are you excited so echinodermata yeah what is this starfish right so this um, group that is uh, example typical example starfish is the example of the group called as echinodermata okay so you can see the picture and you can explain about the starfish right so what do you know about the starfish where do you find starfish can you find so for the other two groups what we studied it is found on land as well as on water do they live on land of course when um, once it is offshore no you can see them on the shore also but where they live actually their habitat is marine habitat it is not only water generally we explain like land on water no why i call as marine what is marine marine means a water which is salty which water is salty sea water right so usually starfish uh, fishes uh, habitat is 
marine habitat okay what else do you know seeing this picture what uh, can you find the skin is very well we have studied about the body of all other organisms to be soft right see here the skin is very tough which is the skin you have this shell like structure no so that is the skin the skin is tough it is very very hard okay it is very tough and it has spines can you see spines where are the spines see here you have a white white dot like structures no they are all called as spines so uh, starfishes have or the um, uh, groups of echinodermata all the organisms have a very tough skin and on the tough skin they have spines okay so what else uh, can you see from the picture they have a central disc this region no the central region the center most portion is called the central disc okay so this is the central disc and you know when you see uh, a starfish itself first what you tell only about their arms no so they have five arms okay where are the five arms 1 2 3 4 and 5 they have five arms and it appears like a star does this appear like a star yes right so it is the name uh, it gets the name starfish because it appears like a star so what about the description about their structure what all they have they have a central empty space which is called the central disc and apart from that they have five arms and and it is called as arms only the five structures which are protruding out are called as arms and they appear like a star then what else they have they have a mouth and the anus okay but see usually where we have mouth we have mouth in the upper region and anus in the lower region right for this starfish the mouth is in the lower side and anus is in the upper side so the portion below will have the mouth and the upper region will have the anus this is the exception see mouth is in the lower side and anus is in the upper side the waste is excreted out through the upper side and the organisms consumes their food through the lower side okay so this is one more peculiar character and what is what are the examples of echinodermata and one more thing this um, arms no they are called as tube feet what are the arms called tube feet because with those arms they can move about so it is called as tube feet the five arms are called as tube feet because that helps them to move about so that helps in locomotion tube feet helps in locomotion what are the examples for echinodermata apart from starfish sea urchins and brittle star so what are the examples sea urchins and brittle star are examples of this group called as echinodermata so what have we studied about the group echinodermata where do they live they are marine their habitat is marine and they have a tough skin which is all covered with spines and they have a central disc and five arms and tube feet which helps in movement and the anus is in the lower side uh, sorry the anus is in the upper side and mouth is in the lower side and finally the examples for echinodermata includes uh, sea urchins and brittle star so this is all about the characteristics of invertebrates in two three classes we are learning no about the invertebrates characteristics it is all over in our next class we will be learning about the characteristics of vertebrates that is very easy whatever you see in the daily world only you uh, say for example man all will come under vertebrates so that we we'll learn in the next class what about homework okay in uh, the one the student who sent me the first right answer for my last uh, home uh, homework was uh, barshika okay so congrats very good and i need every student who is watching this video to 
send me the homework it is not about sending first all uh, you, you can have that competitive spirit but uh, please try to everyone who is watching this video please send your homeworks okay try to attempt let it be wrong it's okay we will be discussing the right answers in the next video okay so try to write the answer and send me don't think what teacher will think all so I am not going to think anything bad about you you have to give a try only a few are sending me homeworks please everyone try to send homeworks okay and the one who sends me first right answer I'll announce the name like this so this week Parshika has given and I will give you the correct answers for the previous homework so in page number 63 question 1 sections 1 to 3 the answers are this one some students have given me explanation on uh, for the description of these characteristics so the quest what was the question name and identify just you have to identify and give the names of the organism some pictures were given no so you have to find what is the name of the picture you need not explain two or three students have written me the whole characteristics of jelly uh, all these uh, organisms so you need not uh, explain all okay so read the question carefully and reply so for today's homework in page number 63 the same page question number one fourth picture alone you will label not fourth question so many have misunderstood in the previous homework it is not fourth question question number one in question number one itself you have four pictures the first three pictures you have sent me answers the previous week the fourth picture alone you are going to identify and write the name of the picture Okay, just write the name you need not explain so uh, send your answers to this number okay this is my number so the person the student who sent me the first uh, uh, right answer I will declare the name in my next zoology class so that is all for today's biology class until I meet you in one more class you all take care and bye bye